Welcome classic rock fans to a video where we examine the pounding heart at the centre of Led Zeppelin and The Who and consider who was the better drummer. So no further ado, let's uh, start off by talking about Keith Moon, shall we? Keith Moon represents that shattering, clattering chaos that uh, epitomised The Who sound. That beautiful racket that he made with John Entwistle, who again revolutionised bass playing as far as I'm concerned. I often wonder between the two of them how Townsend managed to find any space within that music to actually express himself at all is beyond me. Interestingly, Roger Daltrey in his biography said the band played way too loud. Uh, from a singer's perspective, he said often he, he was forced to over-sing all the time in order to be heard. Uh, for example, he, he criticises the Live at Leeds album for that reason and says actually that the Live at Hull is a much better representation of The Who at this time. The Who were one of the most important bands of the 60s. I mean, people often say to me, uh, Beatles or Stones? I say neither, I say Kinks and The Who. And Keith Moon, as well as his antics off stage, his drumming on stage, is absolutely legendary. It was tribal, primitive, chaotic, beautiful and impulsive. His pounding bass drum and shrapnel fill of those line of tom-toms he had were just, uh, were just something else. It all helped to create this sonic tsunami that was this band. Moon trashed the paradigms and limits that were laid down by his contemporaries. It wasn't arrogance on his part. You know, it wasn't vandalism in any way. He just didn't recognise such boundaries. When The Who released their Who Sell Out album in 1967, there was a, a development in The Who's sound as they were moving towards those very epic pieces that Pete Townsend wanted to explore, which required a more ethereal and nuanced style of playing. And Keith Moon adapted perfectly. He read the music beautifully. Look at how his drums drive and punctuate the, the sound of perhaps The Who's greatest single, of course, at this time, which was I Can See For Miles. John Lando said that Moon often played the parts on the drums conventionally given over to the lead guitar. On My Generation, whose first album, Townsend takes his cues from Moon, most often coming down on Moon's licks to emphasise them. Even the song Happy Jack seems to be a number orchestrated around Keith Moon's playing. No drum in rock and roll has ever been given or seized, perhaps. Uh, as much space and presence as Keith Moon did on those early Who albums. Maybe because no other drummer has been able to carry the weight and force of that band. When Kenny Jones replaced Keith Moon in The Who, Roger Daltrey said that he felt Kenny Jones was a great drummer and he was right for the faces, but he just wasn't right for The Who. But then probably very few drummers actually are. So the thing about John Bonham, I mean, John Bonham um, certainly became noticed in 1964 when he was drumming for Terry Webb uh, and the Spiders. He also played drums on the Senator's number, She's a Mod. He also ended up in a blues band called The Crawling King Snakes with Robert Plant. Although the meeting between Robert Plant and Bonham didn't go down particularly well, I think Plant found him incredibly arrogant. Um, he had an arrogant air about him and was quite cocky, he said. Apparently John Bonham said to Robert Plant, you know, you're pretty good, but you'd be a lot better with a drummer like me behind you. Of course, he was hired for the New Yardbirds. I mean, Peter Grant and Plant eventually came to recognise what uh, John Bonham had to offer. And at the time, John Bonham was being offered quite lucrative deals, I think, from uh, the likes of Joe Cocker and Chris Farlow. But I, I think he felt that uh, what he could offer the music that was being created by Payton Plant uh, made it a no-brainer for him. But Bonzo, as he's affectionately referred to, is often dismissed as a bang and clatter man, really, which is to not look that deeply into the often the nuance of his playing. I mean, he was very influenced by... You know, the likes of uh, Joe Morello and the Dave Brubeck Quartet, Buddy Rich and Gene Krupa. Uh, Gene Krupa was also a huge influence on Keith Moon. Uh, he, was, he would very much listen to his um, parents' jazz records. And these records, to some extent, informed his technique. I'll give you an example. It is said often the impressive triplet fills that he employed were purloined from, or at least influenced by, those early jazz records he would listen to quite religiously. But he also had a way of establishing a specific groove and through accents into his playing. Um, he was very much influenced by uh, Clyde Stubblefield, who of course worked with uh, James Brown. It's often been said that Led Zeppelin didn't have a, just have a lead singer, they had a lead guitarist, bassist and a drummer, uh, all very much asserting uh, their influence on this music, and especially in John Bonham's case, I mean, take the start of the Immigrant Song. Uh, you can hear how his drums are very much like a lead track that very much echo uh, Page's guitar parts, rather than just working exclusively with John Paul Jones' bass line, which is uh, where you would see a drummer's roll, or drum roll, if you like. 
the best uh, piece of showcases drumming abilities perhaps is Moby Dick where the, uh, all the other instrumentation drops away and allows the drumming itself to help create or emphasize the melodies believe it or not this of course would be extended to a half hour epic whenever they perform live Phil Collins has said that John Bonham was perhaps one of the biggest influences on his life in terms of his drumming. Hendrix, apparently watching Led Zeppelin, said that drummer of yours has got a right foot like a pair of castanets. And even Paul McCartney has hailed him as a powerhouse uh, drummer, really ballsy. So which would you choose as the better drummer, Keith Moon or John Bonham and why? Please leave your answers down below. I'd love to hear from you on this matter. My personal choice is for Keith Moon and the music of The Who, which I see as uh, something that's transcendent almost. Anyway, leave your answers down below. I'd love to hear from you. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to click like, subscribe and do all that stuff. Check some of the links below this video for ways you can support the wonderful and sterling work done here at Classic Album, where you'd like to become a Patreon, for example. Other than that, I hope you're all staying well, healthy, COVID-free, and more importantly, that you keep listening.